portion of today's video is sponsored by Norton 360. We'll talk about them later. Welcome back to What's Inside. Today we are going to see what's inside of the Tesla wall charger. They just came out with a new one this last couple of weeks. Did you just buy a Tesla and do you actually need to get one of these? So I have one of the old ones and I have one of the new ones. We're gonna take both of them apart. The new one actually doesn't have as many options as the old one, but it may not be as big of a deal as what some people think. But for now, let me show you how we charge our Tesla. For the last five years, all we've done is had a 220 volt little adapter put into our garage, just like what we have inside of our laundry room, I think with our dryer. And that's worked totally fine for us. This is one of the old wall chargers and it actually is signed by the man himself, Elon Musk. This was given as an award gift for so many referrals that we've given with Tesla. And we installed the thing and then we noticed that the plastic is cracked on it, which shouldn't affect the way that it functions, but I did wanna check out the new one and see how it works. So we're gonna test this one out and test out the new one. This portion of today's video is sponsored by Norton 360 and I've been using Norton 360 for about four months now and it was ever since somehow my cell phone got hacked. People went into a local store and charged $2,500 to my cell phone account. This is a real story. This isn't like something I'm saying because of the sponsor of today's video. The type of cyber threats that we're seeing in 2020 are definitely evolving from what we've seen in the past. I use public Wi-Fi all the time because we're traveling so much. And those are some of the moments when your data is exposed. And that's why I like Norton 360 because it provides multiple layers of protection with the antivirus, with the VPN for online privacy. So whether you're traveling or you're at home, I can feel better about my computer and my data being more protected. Use the promo code INSIDE or click on the link in the description to get up to 60% off of Norton 360. So keep your data safe. Thank you to Norton 360 for sponsoring this portion of the video. And now back to the video. So here's the Tesla wall charger and you have this little plug. Let's plug it in and see how fast it actually works. So our current charger goes to 40 amps. We had the electricians run a wire all the way into our garage for the Tesla wall chargers and they put it at 40 amps. So the 40 amps is the max that we get. The old charger goes all the way up to 80 amps, supposedly. At first I was a little bothered, like why would you sell something for the exact same $500 price and you take that energy and you take it from 80 amps clear down to 48 amps. But it turns out all of the current Teslas will only charge on a home charger to the max of 48 amps. And so Tesla has actually limited the software. I didn't know this when I talked to my electricians and I had them install the wall chargers inside of our house. And so apparently we're just running 40 amps of power to the wall because if you look down here, that's the max that we get is 40 amps. So I kind of blew it on that. But maybe when we put in this new wall connector, we'll actually see the 48 amps. I'm not sure, but let's take this one apart, see what's inside of it, and then put together the new one and see what's inside of that. And then we'll plug it into the car and see if it actually charges at a higher rate. Just using the charger that Tesla gives you, in our house, it gives us 32 amps or 242 volts of energy. This charges the car pretty quickly, basically overnight if you're completely empty. I think it takes us like nine hours to charge our entire Model X. And the whole time that we've had Teslas, this has worked perfectly fine and we've never felt the need to have one of the Tesla wall chargers. But now that we're getting a new house and we have one of the signed Elon Musk wall chargers, I just decided Let's just get wall chargers on our entire house. So the first step is to take off these four screws that are bracketing and holding up this entire wall charger. It's a little tight where we have it, so to get to these screws is not the easiest. Okay, so we've taken off the four brackets. Maybe we need to take the face off of it too, because it's just stuck on here. I have a licensed electrician watching us to make sure that we're safe on this because uh, some projects are not worth the risk. Ugh. So there's the face. My electrician says that it was broken when it came out of the box. I have a hard time believing that Tesla sent it to me broken already. Yep, so, there that's they are. Still, so that's just the light right there. Okay, oh, there it goes. Here are all of your wires. Right now this is still live, so we're gonna go to the breaker and actually turn it off. But on the outside, you have this little protective case on it and the light just had one little connector that talks to that. Taking this thing off of the wall, we have the ground wire, neutral wire, this is the hot one, and this one's a hot one. These two you connect together inside of there. So here's what's inside of the old one, the old charging cable box 
It's a bit heavy. Goodbye, old charger. Ooh, look at this. It is glass versus the plastic on the other one. Is the glass more likely to break versus the plastic? You would think the glass would break. Maybe we need some uh, cherry rig everything to test this thing. It does win the award for the best looking versus the other one. I mean, that is beautiful. Look at the cable. Look how thick it is. Look at the old one which is kind of nice when you're in the garage. These old ones get really heavy and you're pulling them around. This is similar to the version three supercharging cables that you see at the new superchargers. I'm no electrician, but this new box looks a lot easier to install from an electrician standpoint. Like it seems to make more sense where this other one, we're like reaching fingers in and grabbing these things and capping off the different wires. First things first, we gotta take off the old bracket here. All right, there's our box with the three cables. So here we are, here's the beautiful glass, brand new Tesla charger. We have all the connections in, it looks pretty safe in there, and it's much easier than the old one to put on. And now we just have to take this thing and just pop it into place, one-handed, can I do it? Here we go. Or why don't you come around and actually pop it on. And then we'll test it out and see what the charging rate is compared to the old one. It should be similar, but we'll see. Oh, there we go, it's already on. Check it out. Just set it right on there. It's not signed by Elon Musk, but this looks so much better inside of my garage. Okay, did it blow up or anything? We're good. We're good? Oh, there's lights. We have one green light. Okay, so if we look at here, standby. It's on standby mode. So now we need to plug it in, and if it's the same as the other one, we should be getting three bars. All right, ooh, it's nice and black. Handle, clean. Does it work, does it work, does it work, does it work? It works, it's green. Okay, it looks like it's connected. Estimated charge hour and 50 minutes. 48 amps, 48 amps. Okay, I may be crazy, but was not the other one, the older one that's supposed to go all the way up to 80 amps? Didn't it go to 40 amps only? And I thought, man, we really blew it. We only put 40 amps of energy to the wall when we should have done higher if the thing goes up to 80 amps. But apparently I have more energy in there than I thought because this is going to 48 amps and the only thing that has changed is that we swapped out the chargers. We didn't do anything with the electrical outlet. So I'm kind of confused. I read that the old one's supposed to go to 80 and it only went to 40. The new one's supposed to go to a max of 48 and it's actually at the 48. So is the car software limiting the other wall charger in there? I don't know, I mean, I don't know everything about Teslas and the way everything works, but um, a lot of people were complaining about this new charger, that it was gonna be so much slower than the old ones, but apparently 48 is the max that you can get with any wall charger that you put in your house. And this one gets the 48, and the other one that's signed by Elon Musk does not get it. Do you need to get one of these wall chargers for your house? Maybe you just bought a Model 3 or now the Model Y is coming out and you're thinking, this thing is $500. I feel like I need it because I need to charge the car at my house. Well, the reality is, yes, you need to charge your car at your house and you need to charge it all the time because the supercharger, you're rarely going to visit that unless you're on road trips. We've gone five years at our house just using the 220 volt or whatever it's called that we got put in for $120 by an electrician. So it's not 48 amps, it's like I think 32 is what it was. When you're thinking about charging your car overnight, that is totally sufficient. So you don't have to buy this for $500. You just don't have to. If you have the extra money and you want it to look dang good on your wall, then yes, this is fantastic. And it does charge a little bit faster. But if you're a new Tesla owner, either one is gonna be too slow to really give you significant charge over like an hour period. When I'm in that situation where I just need like a quick, like 50 to 100 miles, that's when I do stop at my local supercharger and just charge up really quick so that I can drive for the rest of the day. So final thoughts on this charger, I really, really like it. And uh, it's prettier than the other ones. The cable just looks kind of like a mess on there. This is a lot thicker than the newer cables. This is 24 feet long, so it's really, really long. And it just kind of looks messy on there. And then you compare it to the newer charger and you can see that the cable goes on there nicely. It's a lot thinner. It's still 18 feet long, which I think is plenty for most garages. 
and uh, it sits nicely on there because of the cable. Just the looks alone and the way that it sits on your wall is another reason why this one is definitely better than the old one. I'm definitely not going to get rid of the two other signed ones by Elon Musk. Hopefully educated you guys a little bit on which wall charger you should get for your car and how to charge your Tesla. And thanks again to Norton360 for sponsoring a portion of today's video. Um, we'll see you guys around. And then I gotta figure out what to do with this signed Elon Musk cover. It is cracked, but maybe I'll figure out a way to give it away or something. The man himself, Elon Musk.